my name is Rhapsody and welcome to Window Shopping. Just like the name implies, Window Shopping is a new series in which we'll have a little bit of a look at an indie game and then move on to the next. The idea for this series is to introduce you to some new and promising indie titles that, for whatever reason, don't fit into my typical long Let's Play series style of content creation. The first that we're going to be looking at is Necronator Dead Wrong. Necronator Dead Wrong is kind of like Slay the Spire, but the combat is a reverse tower defense. If that makes any sense, it definitely will once we launch into the game. But at the top, I'd like to say this is developed by Toge Productions and is $17.99 USD or your regional equivalent and is currently 10% off for launch week. I'd also like to say that all of the footage captured in this video is of the early access phase of the game. In fact, it just released into its early access phase on Steam. Uh, and as a result, the polish, content, and quality of the game that you are about to see is not necessarily reflective of the end polish, quality, uh, quality or content. Alright, let's start. Number 7, The Death Knight. Formerly a living knight on a quest for the Holy Grail. Currently an undead knight on a quest for the Unholy Grail. You'll never meet a cursed crusader with more wide-eyed wonder or a student of sacrilegious scripture more eager to learn. For some people, death has an odd tendency to make life more enjoyable. So we've got two different selections of starting deck here. Hold on a second, we'll go back. We've got steel and bones and fresh meat, and we've got two different uh, relic selections. Those are ones that I've unlocked over the course of me testing this game to see if it's something that I find suitable for the channel, and I do. I enjoy this game a lot. I would do a series on it if it weren't for the fact that it is quite early in its uh, early access phase. They do have a roadmap laid out that has a lot of promising content along it, uh, but I don't know I would necessarily be able to justify a longer series on the game at the moment. So, let's have a look at the starting deck and see if that will at all help us describe things here. Skeleton, melee unit, and then it's got its stats there. Uh, the most important things are already printed on the card. There's the HP value, there's the movement speed of the character, and there's its attack value. Here is its mana cost. In combat, you will regenerate mana, and you can use that mana to summon creeps that you use to try and take down the enemy towers. You're effectively the spawner in a tower defense. You summon the creep waves and you use spells as kind of like uh, god game abilities to control the battlefield as well. So those aren't really going to make too much sense at the moment until we actually see them in use in battle. So melee units, ranged units, and then there's zap. This is kind of a god game ability. So you can use this to target an area on the map and deal damage to your enemies as well as stun them. Uh, then there's Blood Rage, target your friendlies and give them a buff. Armor up, target your friendlies and give them a buff. And then Overdraw, uh, which is you overdraw one card, which will exceed your maximum hand size. We'll have a little bit of a talk about that as we're utilizing that mechanic in game. But let's get started. For the moment, there's only one scenario, Chubat's Conquest, and the time is living. Let's embark on an epic conquest to destroy the living. You opened a letter and it says, Congratulations, you've just graduated from the Undead Academy. As a freshly certified villain, prepare to embark upon your very own quest for world conquest. The Academy hereby presents you with the patented Soul Spawn Crystal. Please attach it to your arm and the crystal will permanently bind itself to your life force. No substitutions or refunds. So having a look at this over map, you'll, uh, <clears throat> you'll recognize a lot of elements from Slay the Spire. Uh, Chew bats flock across the sky. One lands beside you, perching on a dead tree. Impressive, says the Chubat. You could be the next Necronator. You know about the Necronator, right? The Chubat looks at you. Greatest Dark Lord to ever terrorize the world. He lost his power a hundred years ago. Ring any bells? Anyway, luckily for you, I know how to reclaim it. And I'm currently accepting work as a consultant for aspiring tyrants. What? You don't think I'm trustworthy? Just to show I'm on your side, I'll give you a gift. Go ahead, pick one. So I could draft a spell, upgrade a squad, or gain a utility. The utility is the tactical overload perk. When you are overdrawn, that is to say, when your max hand size is larger than it should be, uh, you get plus 25% mana regeneration. Uh, perk means it the effect lasts until the end of battle, and exhaust means it is removed until end of combat when it is played. Again, 
a little bit familiar to those of you who are familiar with Slay the Spire. I, in fact, will take that, and I'm going to try and go into an overload strategy here. Excellent choice, says the Chewbat. Since you've accepted my gift that makes us partners, I always give the best advice. You won't regret listening to me. Now, if you want to reclaim the Necronator's power, first, you've got to conquer a few towns. Defeat an army or two. You know, just to prove you're worthy. I'm sure an up-and-coming scourge to humankind like you can handle it. Uh, the voice I'm doing for the Chewbat, by the way, is the voice... It's uh, a little bit of my interpretation of the voice that exists in the trailer. So having a look, we can see multiple different spaces. Obviously, there's an event space, uh, the question marks. Uh, there's a campfire space where you can rest or upgrade a card. There's a shop space, and then there's normal combats. Uh, but we can also look further up. We can see this is effectively a boss, but it's always there. So I, it's more of a boss than an elite. But you do get relics after having completed those fights. Uh, and then there's another line of bosses further up. And then at the very end, three campfires that lead into the final boss. We can also see our portal HP up here, which is our maximum HP effectively in this game. Uh, souls, which are our currency. And then we can just pull this back up. We can also have a look at relics. We did start with a relic, which was Hellforged Armaments. Give your units plus 25% attack and negative 10% move speed. So I, I, I am extremely serious when I say that this game is Slay the Spire in many respects. Like you can upgrade a card once. Uh, you have rest campfires where you upgrade or rest. Uh, you've got the maximum HP and you've got the, the money that you spend outside of combat. You've got similar kind of spaces on the map and obviously a similar max structure. Um, the deck building elements are relatively similar. Obviously there's a relic system. Uh, the huge difference is in the gameplay. I guess when you walk into a swamp like this, you're asking for trouble, says the Chewbat. Might as well wear a skin around your sign around your neck that says, please attack me. Here's your next opportunity to test your combat skills. Okay. So here's the map. It gives you a little bit of an overview of it at the start. And here's me, effectively, right now. So you can see at the very bottom here, I've got all of my mana just casually regenerating. The enemy is going to spawn uh, units out of their barracks. You can see there's two towers. If I take over the first one, it'll become haunted and it will start accumulating money for me. And it'll also act kind of like a turret hitting my enemies. So I really, really, really want to take that over as soon as possible. However, if you've ever played a tower defense, you'll know that the least effective thing you can do is send in like multiple waves, but very, very spaced out. It lets your enemy deal with them. So you really want to try and build up a few waves at the same time. Of course, that's not for every single strategy, but it's common in a lot of them. Zap, that's kind of a god game ability I got to use there. I dealt damage to those enemies. I'm also going to armor up my units there. And I'll even Blood Rage them. This will deal damage to my own units, but it increases their attack speed and their... Ooh, neat. It increases their attack speed and their damage. So I'll play Tactical Overload in order to exhaust that card and activate the perk, Tactical Overload. Only when I'm uh, overdrawn will it work. And then I'll use this to overdraw. It replaces itself and then we overdraw a card. So now this is active and I've got 25% more mana regeneration. There's also a signpost here that you can use to change the direction that your units take across the map. So if I swap this, there would be this path active. I don't really want to do that right now though. Perfect. This should be good enough. Uh, zap those, especially because they're in range of this, so they're taking range damage from like, kind of like a turret, effectively, or a tower. You might want to refer to it at this point. Shield those, and then they can deal more damage faster. Beautiful. Uh, sounds getting a little, little loud on my side, so I'm going to just uh, pop those down a little bit. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. So you can see at the top there, the, the final structure was the one that had the maximum HP for the enemy. 
There's usually multiple structures. Sometimes there's three even. We'll continue to explain anything that's been missing so far in the future battles. Uh, plus 50 soul. That's obviously just coins, effectively. Currency. Interesting. So three different choices here. We have the Demon Fiend. It's a melee unit that has Armor Breaker. Armor Breaker applies uh, negative armor to the target. And, you know, it'll have an array of statistics. I'm not going to pull up the array of statistics for every single unit in the game so far. Ooh, attack speed of 200. Pretty good. Oh, I guess I drafted that. Oops. I thought I was clicking back, but I was clearly clicking draft. My bad. I'm freezing, says the Chubat. The words leaving my mouth are literally freezing in front of my face. Look, you can read them right there in the air. I'm freezing. Defeat these enemies and take me somewhere warm. I'm kind of just going to wait for a little bit here. You know, I'm going to get Tactical Overload out. Activate that perk for later. Hmm. If I had 70 and went for the Soldier and then Fletcher, we actually probably would have been able to do this really early on. I'm going to try and use Zap to actually kill this first wave to give me more time to build up mana for later. When you're trying to use a god game ability, time slows down a little bit to give you the ability to target. And obviously your base, if this was attacked, I'd be losing my max HP, by the way. Uh, your base also has defensive capabilities itself. Got him. Then I'm going to overdraw just so that I have the extra mana regeneration. I've got this whole party just running down the lines now. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to give you all armor. And then as soon as I can, I'm going to Blood Rage you too. Yikes! Those axe throwers absolutely shredded my units. Oh, that was really bad. Really, really, really bad. Okay, so the deck building element, again, very similar. We have a deck, we have a discard pile, we have an exhaust pile. As soon as the deck needs to be drawn from and we don't have any in it, then we will shuffle our discard pile into our deck and start the game. So armor up also slows my own units, which uh, frankly is a little saddening. Overdraw just so I get the extra mana regeneration at the moment. One of the biggest things I find is capturing the first is huge. As soon as you capture that, you have far more regeneration and you can afford to play many more units so obviously here's the max hp of my enemy and that's their spawner at the very end and until enemy reinforcements that effectively means until you lose when enemies uh reinforce in this game they murder you effectively units continue spawning from the enemy capital until you die so letting that run down, a bad idea. A big old no. Do that and then overdraw really quickly. Looks like I am going to get that building down. Beautiful. So as you can see, I mentioned it before, but I didn't necessarily show it. This unit, is, this unit, this building is now haunted and you can see it's generating mana for me. Although our base is doing it a lot faster. One, two. And then the Fletchers actually are faster than the slower soldiers. So I can afford to play them a little bit later and they'll still catch up and be part of the same wave. Yeah. Armor all of those because they're already standing where I want, and the armor up does lower their speed. Yeah, fine. Got him. More and dropped a card. Phalanx perk. If you have three or more squads in hand, the squads in your hand gain plus four armor. And then we have Frost Nova, target enemy. 
this will usually be target like an enemy area. 50 damage, negative 50% attack speed, negative 50 move speed and 10 second duration. Okay, that's pretty good. It's like a kind of like inverse battle rage against your enemies. Uh, and then Shadow Mist targets enemy. It does 20 damage per second and lowers their move speed as well. I'm going to go with Phalanx because I'm going to try and build an overload build. So I'm likely to have more squads in hand just as a result of the fact that I have more cards in hand. Uh, also an exhaust, so it gets out. I don't need to worry about it after I played it. I'm going to go here to a campfire for an upgrade. And interestingly enough, when you upgrade in this game, you get two different options for your upgrade. So I've got Swift Phalanx, uh, which will increase the move speed of my units by 25% more, or I can get twice as much armor. So you can see this is the base and these are the different pickups I could make. I'm going to go with Strong Phalanx. Specifically, plus eight armor is pretty, pretty powerful. Let's have a look at like how much armor our base units have, right? Let's look at even the soldier. The soldier starts with two armor and this is a tanky unit. Looking a little bit further up the path to see if there's any obvious ways I'm going to want to go with this. Now, it does seem like uh, sticking left here is probably the best that I can do. So let's go here. I'm going to try and get another campfire immediately after and upgrade another one of the important cards. Why would anyone want to live in this frozen wasteland? Asked the Chewbat. Snow, snow, snow. Anything but snow. Did the weather get more monotonous? Hurry up and squash these enemies. I need a change of scenery. Battle start. Uh, I don't want to overdraw at the very start if I can avoid it. I only really want to use the overdraw when I have the perk out that benefits me for having been overdrawn. So here I'll probably wait until I can play the, uh, the soldier and the skeleton at the same time. And then I'll wait for the regen so that I can play the Fletcher too. If I can play the Soldier and the Skeleton at the same time while these units are kind of within that kind of range, so like now, they'll also get attacked by the Tower, which will save me a lot of my own units in this battle. But also, it'll slow down my units, uh, my melee units there, uh, which will give my archers time to catch up. Okay, I don't want to play the armor up on them yet because it does lower their move speed. Right now, hit that. That should help me overwhelm this building really, really quickly. I'm going to zap just to stun these units to try and keep them a little bit further away or at least make them quicker to kill. Come on, come on, come on. Now I'm pretty happy to overdraw and then play tactical overdrawn. Sweet. So now my perk for strong phalanx is active. <laughs> Nekoporo comes to come. Uh, this is a uh, lorem ipsum. It's effectively a Latin typesetting uh, filler, basically. As I mentioned, the game is in very, very early access at the moment. The enemies don't try and take back towers you've taken, by the way. Uh, so here we'll go. Do, do, do. All of those are going to have plus eight armor as a result of the fact that while I played each of them, I had three squads in hand. So now that I don't have three squads in hand and that perk isn't active, I'm going to want to play Zap. Uh, that's a pretty good opportunity to do it. Uh, I'm going to want to play Zap there just to make sure that I have enough squads in hand to continue activating the bonus that I want. Let's go Fletcher. Oh, I'll my units there. on. Get him, get him, get him, get him. I'm hoping nothing spawns. And beautiful, nothing did. I was holding over the zap just in case. Let's drop down the card. Ooh, this one's pretty upgraded. It's called Deadly Demon Blade, melee unit stealth. So deadly usually means that the upgrade has increased its damage. 
We also have a demolition unit that is a kind of like kamikaze unit. It's a unit that will uh, kill both itself and its enemies. And then another soldier. I'm going to go with the Deadly Demon Blade just because it's upgraded. I like me some upgraded cards. They're quite powerful oftentimes. Uh, next up, I'm going to upgrade the Tactical Overload. Plus 50%. Great. So budget will make it 10 cheaper for me to play. But that doesn't matter, right? If I'm going to be regenerating so much more over the course of combat. So strong Tactical Overload. We need more cards that are going to overload us rather than just the Overload card. So... That's what we're looking to draft. Time for a fight. Upstart, says Lord Balderdash. Villain, too weak to stand the cold? Not like me. I love the cold. This isn't even cold. I'm sweating. I'm hot. Don't you dare say I'm cold. I'll teach you what it means to really freeze. Into the battle. The overview of the map. Yeah. I actually am leaning towards overdrawing really early here just to try and get to my perks very quickly. I'm going to do that. Damn it, no perks. That's rough. Thankfully, the enemies have spawned quite a while away, so... I should have time. I might just go Skeleton, Skeleton, Fletcher really early here. Yeah, play out 70. And a strong tactical overload. Armor up immediately before they get into that combat because I want to try and get as many of them as possible to live through that. That stun there. Just so that I can try and take out this early tower. Strong phalanx, finally. Beautiful. So Deadly Demon Blade has stealth. Stealth means that unless it is attacking, units can't target it. I've never used a stealth unit, so I don't know how it would work. But I don't necessarily see the benefit it would provide. Maybe I'm just missing something. In fact, I almost certainly am. Oh, damn. We actually managed to get that haunted. That was ridiculous. All right. Let's go. Soldier. Soldier. Deadly Demon Blade. Beautiful. Ah, the Deadly Demon Blades are, of course, quite fast. So the enemy doesn't have god game abilities like I do. Uh, so I don't know how stealth would be benefiting me through that. But it seems like units are always in combat when they're attacking. It's like I don't necessarily understand it. That said, I've never used it before. So if I will ever understand it, now would be the time. Okay, let's armor up all of these units. And battle rage them. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty easy kill for us. So, word of the wise, if uh, if you do end up picking up this game and you uh, do have difficulty on your runs, because I, I had a lot of difficulty for what I would say is probably my first three or four runs, uh, then I realized upgrading your cards is really important in this game. Uh, drafting more cards, not necessarily as important. Uh, the, the cards that you can draft over the course of the run are very, very similar to the cards that start in your base deck. And unlike Slay the Spire, it doesn't have a removal mechanic. So I was kind of hoping that something would do that. Some events, I guess, remove cards from your deck, but it's not common, right? They're, at every shop, you don't have a removal. Uh, so upgrading the base cards in your deck becomes far more important. I bet that battle warmed you up, says Lord Balderdash. Pathetic, coward. Need a battle to warm myself up. I lost because I didn't need the extra body heat. It's my choice not to feel my toes or, or nose or anything. All right, so here's our first relic pickup. Flask of Sapphire Manor. Gain 25 mana at the start of each battle. Neat. And draft a card... Axe Thrower applies Arm Break and it's a ranged unit. Uh, there's a Grunt, which is a melee unit that enrages. Enrage is gained plus attack speed and plus move speed when its HP is low. 
And then there's Invigorating Rain, targets friendly, 40 HP per second for a 10 second duration. Axe throws are quite powerful. And I do want more units. Yeah. Let's take an axe throw there. I'm going to probably go event, event here. Uh, you awaken one night to see an unquenchable imp sitting on your chest. Didn't you hire an exterminator to get rid of these things? Now it's puckering its lips. Lovely. That means it wants to be fed. So I can get 100 souls if I give it 200 on my portal HP. So that's effectively 200 HP for 100 gold. Um, I don't really end up running out of money, typically, because I don't buy that many cards. So maybe I feed, I'm going to feed it soul. You've never seen such terrible tape manners. It's slurping souls like noodles. At least it's finally off your chest. After it's done with the world's most uncivilized supper, you shoo it away with a broom. Yep, I'm going to go for another quest, though. Ooh. An uncommon relic for 100 souls? Lovely. Uh, there's only one institution more vile, more insidious, more corrupt than the Undead Academy. And that's the Merchant Guild. Naturally, you have a great respect for them. They'll sell anything to anyone, no questions asked. Purchase a relic here, and Shining Olix Ball! Give your uh, units plus four armor! Our whole thing now is just armoring up all of our units. They will never die. Don't ask where they got the goods. They won't ask where you got the funds. I'd never want to live here, says the Chubat. I don't care if other Chubats think it's comfortable. All the trees, all the bugs. Like I want to eat bugs. Gotta pass through the jungle, no matter what it takes. Get us to the other side. Alright. Starting with 25 mana is real neat. I'm gonna play a Deadly Demon Blade literally instantly. See if I can take out that very, very early on. Because it won't get attacked by the ranged attacks from this, right? At least until it's attacking the building. Oh my god, that's gonna get it. Yes! Deadly Demon Blades can get it. And I mean get it. By which I mean capture that structure, obviously. I guess ranged units attack them less. Like, they are clearly living a lot longer than, uh, than I typically expect units to live. I'm gonna now armor them all up. Play strong phalanx. I'm gonna blood rage them. Maybe this is like, oh my god! Let's got him! <laughs> All right, got it. Self is actually good. I was underestimating it. Drafting another card. Uh, perk: Your units have plus twenty-five percent attack just overall forever. There's also battle cry. Uh, squad in hand. This is squads in hand at the time as you play it, including the squad that replaces the battle cry when you play the battle cry, by the way. Uh, plus 25% attack, and then there's another demon blade. I mean, I could take another demon blade and try and upgrade it, but demonic strength seems ridiculous. I'm gonna look at detail, and then, yeah, no, it does say draft rather than back. Never mind. So it was my mistake last time. I was just expecting back to be in that location. Let's get another question mark. Going on this line, we can uh, get a question mark after this fight. So this swamp is what Professor Feldgarn calls home, huh? Asked the Chubat. The Undead Academy must be in really bad shape to make this look appealing. Don't let those enemies slow you down. Stop too long and we might sink into the slime. Strong tactical overload immediately. Beautiful. I think this is going to be another one where I wait for a while and then pop out this app against the enemy's first wave. Not capitalizing on this time to get free damage on this structure is real risky, but I already have a perk out. And I have some other perks in the deck. Like, I get stronger over time, so I'm okay with playing a little slower here than I otherwise typically might.
Okay, and then put that out, and then... Strong Phalanx, because I know I have to play that. And Overdraw for the regeneration. I'm effectively going to wait until I'm on 100 before I play anything now. Because as soon as I play anything, I'm no longer overdrawn. Perfect. Oh my god, it's all working. Demon Blade, Demon... Uh, I guess Axe Throw is still fine there. I don't really need that to have the extra Strength. And then Demonic Strength, definitely. As soon as I can get it. Come on. Boom. Hey, Blood Rage as soon as I can play it. That'll do it. Sweet. Draft a card. Crippling Curse, Grunt and Axe, or a Crippling Curse being negative 50%. Oh, right. We've seen that before. But I think we saw an upgraded version of it. I don't really want any of these. So I'm going to convert them to souls instead. I have to go for the rare one. The blood-sucking baron of Blackberry Barons invites you to supper. Your blood will be his supper. If you accept, he will gift you a relic from his private collection. The more blood you let him drink, the better his payment will be. So, again, this game is in very, very early access. So, content complete, polish complete, etc. Like, th these things aren't currently where they will be by the full release of the game or over the course of the roadmap for early access. But I will say, one thing I've found is you only really lose portal HP if you're about to die. <laughs> it damages out pretty quickly. And if you don't have like a unit you can spawn in order to prevent the enemies from continuing to attack, you've probably already been overwhelmed. Uh, so I'm always fast and footloose with giving away all of my portal HP. So I'm gonna get a random rare. Red crystal, give your units plus 10 attack. Plus 10% attack, rather. You wake up in an alley. Your blood has been drained. And what's this? Are you missing a kidney? Your mood improves when you receive a delivery the next day. Stamped with a barren seal. You raise a thousand kidneys for another gift like this. I'm undead. I don't need that kidney. What's it going to filter out of my blood? Ica? Is it going to filter Ica out of my blood? Uh, okay, this gives me a couple more upgrades. Sweet. Upgrade. Get Demonic Strength upgraded. Plus four armor as well. See, if my units are so tanky that they just cannot die. Yeah, that's everything. That, I think that's what I want. I'm just going to continue stacking armor. So armored Demonic Strength. It's going to take the upgrade there. Beautiful. And I'll go for this fight and then I'll go for an upgrade immediately after. <laughs> still, 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 too, still, still all cold, says Lord Balderdash. In fact, I'm even warmer than the last time we fought. Roasting. I don't need to go inside. I've been standing out here for a week. You call this cold? You'll never survive the wit. Answer battle. Click that a couple times. Didn't work. Oops. You do have the ability over here to redraw, by the way, but it cost me 40 to do so. Here's all of my relics. You can see when they're active, they'll be glowing. Uh, like they currently are, by the way, because all of those are currently active. There's, I don't have any conditional relics at the moment, so it makes sense. Uh, good, good, good. This will be fine. Soldier. Wait. Soldier. Soldier. Axe Ah, no, that's not an Axe I can't do that yet. Hang on. This is Zap, man. Strong Tactical Overload. Strong Phalanx. Overdraw. I mean, I have Strong Phalanx. Should I just play out my Axe Throw? I wanted the Axe Throw to go with this squad. Okay, it's fine. it's fine. And then get the demon blade out. Beautiful. And then the final thing I'm going to have to do is that armor demonic strength. Honestly, I think... I think we got, like, a ridiculously powerful start. 
specifically with that pre-upgraded demon blade being offered that early i i kind of suspect we're just gonna stomp this game that is uh, something that i've experienced about the game as well when i was talking about like uh, the way that you lose your max hp in this game the portal hp and that you tend to be overwhelmed and immediately lose if that's actually going to happen to you at all uh the the fights do tend to like they can be like a push and pull uh for quite a while but oftentimes it will end up being you blow out the enemy or they blow you out like you most losses that I've had occur when enemy reinforcements uh, manage to actually start spawning. So obviously, if the enemy is going to win, they blow you out. But it, it does feel kind of... Uh, the longer the fight goes on, the significantly lower your chances of winning, even before tactical reinforcement. Because if you're being held at a stalemate at that point, uh, you can't... It, how, I think the easiest way to describe it is uh, battle results are often polarizing. Or polarized. Now that, now that you won, you probably want to burn down a castle? The Says Lord Balderdash. Because you're freezing. <laughs> you need the heat. Go ahead. Warm your hands by some puny fire. I prefer when my fingers turn blue. Oh. Assassin Dagger, what is this? Sounds interesting. Uh, give your units plus 50% critical damage. I don't even know if I have crit ability. Budget inspiration. Cards in hand cost negative 10 mana cost. Yeah, that's going to help me run a lot of cards out at the same time. Uh, let's have a quick look to see if there is a crit rate on these. Crit rate, yeah, 20%. 10%. Okay, so the demon blades have like a higher crit rate. Sweet. Especially with the stacked damage. That's going to be really good for us. I'm going to upgrade Overdraw. It's now budget for five less. No, Overdraw is squad card. Yes. Uh, so that'll specifically make sure that the card that I draw into is going to be a squad card, which is really good for the sake of my Phalanx. Now, those two upgrades that you see there are not necessarily all of the upgrades that that card can become. I know that Overload can also become like Tactical Overload, which is negative 10 to the cost of the card that you overload and draw. So that doesn't necessarily represent the full section of options. I'm freezing, says the Chubat. Words are leaving. Uh, we've seen that one before. Strong tactical overload immediately. Should have been Deadly Demon Blade. It sh probably should have been the Deadly Demon Blade earlier, honestly. Ooh, I can take this building, and then I can swap the path to take this building. Lovely. Skeleton, quickly. And then when they get in range. Sweet, we got that building already. Now I'm going to swap that path there. So that I can try and take over the other one and increase my mana regen. These units are so well armored right now. I wish I could actually like pull up their individual statistics here on the field, but they're not really interactables like that. Oh, never mind. We're going to win the game before we even get the other one. Demon Blades are strong, y'all. As it turns out, uh, they're quite good. Especially if you end up getting a ridiculous amount of armor for all of your units so they don't die. Tactical Overload! Hey! Another one! That's really interesting. I'm gonna try and do that. I only have one card that actually overloads is the problem at the moment, though. Don't let these enemies push you off a mountain, says the Chubat. They'll probably snap your neck, break all your bones. Then I'd have to find another evil apprentice. You wouldn't any inconvenience me like that, would you? really want to redraw right now. I 
I kind of do want to. Yeah, I'm going to redraw just try and get to my buffs. Yeah. Strong tactical overload. Budget inspiration, negative 10 to. I don't really want a negative 10, though. But I should. And squad. Hang on. Use the zap here. And then squad overload. Great. Wait for a couple more seconds. You and. I mean, I should have pathed it down the other one to get this earlier. That would have been uh, helpful. I'm keeping my eye on this armor up just in case. Don't really think I need it. Armor demonic strength, yes, definitely. I don't really want to slow down their speed though. Their movement speed is why I get to do nutty things like this. Just blitz enemies. Now I'll definitely arm them up. Yeah, their crit damage is absolutely ridiculous. While I do feel like I am making the game look easier than it necessarily is, uh, I also do feel like, as I mentioned before, the results are often polarizing. Like, you blow out the enemies or you get blown out. Powerful Invigorate. Targets friendly, plus 250 HP. But Demonic Strength again? Yeah. <laughs> These perma buffs are doing real well for us. I'm going to continue getting them. Plus four armor again! Yes! <laughs> oh, great. So I could go to a shop here, and while I would choose this, I'm going to go to the shop just to show it off. How about a game, says Grimbone the Swindler. Poker, gin rummy, you're already paying a game with bigger stakes, aren't you? A world of, a game of world domination is the prize. But you still need cards to play, and I have cards. Here are cards. Some of them are pre-upgraded. You can see the costs on the top. And then all of the other information, obviously, in the cards, naturally. Uh, 150 damage in a four-second stun. That's a lot. A melee unit is a tough soldier. This just has more max HP than previous soldiers. I'm going to definitely take that. That's real good. Gladiator gives all squads in your hand plus 50% HP. So uh, if we were to look at the other deck, and I'll probably give a little bit of overview of that at the end of this video, the other deck is more like hand buff. You buff all of the units that you have in hand using things like the Gladiator, uh, and then you play them, and they are absolutely ridiculous at that point. I'm not really going to take any of the rest of these. Like, Stunning Meteor Strike is good, but I need more units in my deck and fewer spells. Okay. Upgrade, and then Tactical Overload. Overdraw one card and perk. So this will actually now overdraw me a card and activate itself. Yes. Also, the other one was budget. I don't really care about that. I'm not interested. That's an interesting upgrade for this one to have. I like it. Let's go and fight. Flurries, says Lord Balderdash. That's what you fought before. This time, the battle will be a blizzard. You don't even know what cold means. I'll turn you into a walking ice cube. You'll wish you had frostbite just like I do. Do you wish you had frostbite? Do you eat pieces of crap for breakfast? Strong tactical overload. Got him. <gasps> Demon blade. Demon blade. Hopefully their units track out in this direction. So that I have as much time as possible to. Never mind. I, I have as much time as I need. I'm going to also quickly swap the direction and see... No, they're already committed to that direction, so I can't actually do it. Dang. If I get the right buffs in hand... Actually, I'm going to redraw. Armor Demonic Strength. Armor Demonic Strength. Let's play an Axe Breaker at the base, just to defend me. And then Blood Rage as soon as I can on the units that are already killing me. Ah, uh, we win. <laughs> I 
deadly demon blades, y'all. They are deadly. And their blades can only be described as demonic. <laughs> Why are my teeth chattering? Asks Lord Balderdash. I, I can't take the cold. I need warm mittens and a nice thick scarf. Warm underwear wouldn't hurt either. Maybe I should move to Al Nubi. The journey ends for now, and we get a bunch of experience leveling up. I don't really know what that level up is doing. I imagine it's similar to Slay the Spire. Uh, permanent progression unlocks like new cards, new relics, uh, new decks. But uh, having gotten the second starting relic and the second deck, I don't know if there is anything else currently in the game. This is why I advise it is very, very early access. And the other deck is Skeletons, Soldiers, and Brutes. Invigorates for healing your units on the field, but you can see Battle Cry and Fortify here. Battle Cry squads in hand gain plus 25% attack, and Fortify squads in hand gain plus 50% HP. You can pick up a bunch of other cards that also buff your hand units, and then you just slam down a brute that is uh, like 4,000 HP, does 500 damage every swing, uh, and effectively just destroys things. It's, uh, it's a nice kind of build-up style. And the other starting relic is give all of your units plus 50% HP and plus 25% attack. However, they all cost 10 more mana. A neat trade-off if you can get it to work. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. This has been Window Shopping. The name of the game has been Necronator Dead Wrong, developed by Toge Productions. There is a link in the description down below to the Steam store page. Again, it is 18 USD or your regional equivalent and has a 10% off sale for launch week. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. If you have any suggestions for series, uh, series, if you have any suggestions for games that you would like to see in this series, please leave them in the comments down below or go to the Republic Discord, also linked in the description down below and suggest them to me directly. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.